Have you ever wondered, did King Arthur, the legendary King of Camelot, really exist, or is he just a figment of our collective imaginations? This question has long been a subject of debate among historians, scholars, and fans of Arthurian lore alike. The mystery surrounding King Arthur's existence is as dense and captivating as the misty forests of medieval Britain. Was he a real historical figure, a brave and noble king who led his people to victory against the invading Saxons? Or was he simply a character born out of the rich tapestry of Celtic mythology and later embellished by medieval storytellers? On one hand, some scholars argue that King Arthur was a real person, a powerful warlord or king who lived around the 5th or 6th century. They point to ancient texts and archaeological evidence that hint at the existence of a great leader fitting Arthur's description. Others, however, contend that Arthur is purely a mythical figure, a symbol of the ideal king, conjured up by the collective imagination of a people yearning for a golden age of heroism and chivalry. Despite these differing opinions, what remains undisputed is the significant influence of the Arthurian legends on Western literature and culture. From the courtly love of Lancelot and Guinevere to the magical exploits of Merlin to the noble quest for the Holy Grail, these stories have captivated audiences for centuries. They have been retold and reimagined in countless books, films and artworks, each adding a new layer to the rich tapestry of Arthurian lore. So, whether King Arthur was a real person or a legendary hero, his impact on our cultural heritage is undeniable. He embodies timeless ideals of bravery, honour and justice that continue to resonate with us today. And perhaps in the end, the truth of his existence is less important than the enduring power of the stories that bear his name. Whether King Arthur was real or not, there's no denying the enduring impact of his tales. Now let's journey back in time to explore the origins of these captivating legends. Arthurian legends didn't just appear out of thin air, they have historical roots that date back to the Middle Ages. Now, to really dive into the origins of these tales, we need to travel back in time all the way to the 9th century. Here, we find the first known literary reference to Arthur in a text known as the Historia Britannum, or the History of the Britons. This text, attributed to a Welsh monk named Nennius, describes Arthur as a warrior king who battled against the invading Saxons. Yet, it's important to remember that King Arthur wasn't described as the chivalrous noble king we know today. Instead, he was depicted as a fierce and formidable warrior. There's even a list of his 12 battles, culminating in the Battle of Baden, where he supposedly slew 960 men in a single charge. Quite the feat, wouldn't you say? But who was this Arthur? Was he a real person or a figure of myth? The answer isn't clear-cut. Some historians suggest that Arthur may have been a Roman-affiliated military leader named Ambrosius Aurelianus, known for his victories against the Saxons. Others propose that he could have been a Celtic warlord or possibly even a composite of several historical figures. There's also a theory that King Arthur could have been a folk hero similar to Robin Hood. He might have been a symbol of resistance against the Saxon invaders, a beacon of hope for a land in turmoil. Over time, his exploits could have been embellished and romanticized, evolving into the legendary tales we know today. So King Arthur might have been a real person or maybe a composite of several. But how did he become the legendary figure we know today? Let's find out. Enter Geoffrey of Monmouth, a 12th century cleric whose writings forever changed the Arthurian narrative. Picture a man of the cloth, hunched over parchments by candlelight, his quill dancing across the page as he weaves history and mythology into a captivating tapestry of tales. This was Geoffrey of Monmouth, a figure as enigmatic as the legends he popularized. Geoffrey authored the history of the kings of Britain, a tome that catapulted the Arthurian legends into the realm of mainstream consciousness. Though historians today may squabble over the accuracy of his account, there's no denying the impact of his writings. Geoffrey's history was a game changer, infusing the Arthurian narrative with a sense of grandeur and magic that captured the imagination of readers far and wide. He introduced us to Excalibur, Arthur's legendary sword, said to be so powerful that it could cleave a man in two. In Geoffrey's telling, Arthur didn't merely find Excalibur, it was bestowed upon him by the Lady of the Lake, a mystical figure who embodied the enchanting allure of these tales, and who could forget Merlin? Before Geoffrey, Merlin was but a blip in the annals of Arthurian lore, but under Geoffrey's pen, Merlin transformed into a wizard of extraordinary power, a figure of wisdom and cunning who guided Arthur through his many trials. 
It was Merlin who orchestrated the sword in the stone challenge, setting Arthur on the path to kingship. Geoffrey's tales were fantastical, but they resonated with readers. Why? Because they tapped into our innate desire for heroism, for adventure, for a world that's larger than life. They gave us a king who was not just a ruler, but a hero, a man of destiny, who wielded a magical sword and was guided by a wizard. Geoffrey's work was just the beginning. The Arthurian legends were about to become even more enchanting. From the quill of a 15th century writer named Thomas Mallory, the Arthurian legends received their most comprehensive and enduring form. Thomas Mallory, a knight during the Wars of the Roses, penned one of the most influential works on the Arthurian legends known as Le Mort d'Arthur. While imprisoned for a series of crimes, Mallory sought solace in creating a narrative that would forever alter the course of Arthurian literature. Le Mort d'Arthur, which translates as The Death of Arthur, is a reworking of existing tales about the legendary king, woven into a cohesive narrative that captured the imagination of readers then and continues to do so now. One of the most significant contributions of Mallory's work was the introduction of chivalry and the ideals of knighthood to the Arthurian narrative. He presented Arthur as a paragon of knightly virtue, establishing a moral code that would guide the actions of his knights. This code revolved around concepts of honor, courage and loyalty, which were seen as the defining qualities of a true knight. Mallory's work also gave us the famous Round Table, a symbol of equality and camaraderie among Arthur's knights. The Round Table served as a democratic forum where no one knight held a position of prominence over another. Each knight, regardless of his lineage or accomplishments, had an equal voice at the table, a revolutionary concept in the hierarchical society of the Middle Ages. And who could forget the Holy Grail quest? The ultimate symbol of spiritual enlightenment, the Grail quest, was introduced by Mallory as the highest achievement a knight could aspire to. This quest, fraught with peril and requiring utmost purity of heart, became the defining mission of Arthur's knights, shaping their characters and their destinies. Mallory's work solidified the Arthurian legends in our cultural consciousness, but the tales were far from finished. His narrative, rich with adventure, honor, and spiritual questing, laid the foundation for future interpretations and adaptations, ensuring the enduring appeal of King Arthur and his knights. From classic literature to modern cinema, the Arthurian legends continue to capture our imagination. Over the centuries, these tales have been reimagined and repurposed, each interpretation a mirror reflecting the values, anxieties and aspirations of its time. In the realm of literature, T.H. White's The Once and Future King stands as a shining example of Arthurian reinvention. This novel, written in the mid-20th century, reinterprets the Arthurian legends through a prism of post-World War II pacifism, painting a complex, poignant portrait of Arthur as a tragic figure striving for peace in a world marred by violence. Transitioning to the silver screen, we find John Borman's Excalibur, a cinematic feast of visual and narrative excess that encapsulates the mood of the early 80s. This film embraces the fantastical elements of the Arthurian narrative, infusing it with a dash of the surreal and the psychedelic. On the small screen, the BBC series Merlin offers a fresh spin on the legends. This series places the wizard Merlin in the spotlight, envisioning him as a young man grappling with his magical powers in a world where magic is outlawed. This interpretation cleverly subverts the traditional Arthurian narrative, making it accessible to a new generation of viewers. And let's not forget the realm of video games, where King Arthur the role-playing war game Let's players step into Arthur's shoes and shape the course of his destiny, offering a truly interactive take on the legendary King saga. As we traverse from novels to films, television series and video games, it becomes clear that the Arthurian legends have been bent and twisted in myriad ways to suit the tastes of modern audiences. Each interpretation, with its unique blend of history, myth and contemporary sensibilities, contributes to the rich tapestry of Arthurian lore. As we can see, the Arthurian legends have evolved greatly over the centuries, but what is it about these tales that continues to enchant us? The story of King Arthur, whether real or imagined, continues to resonate with audiences worldwide, but why? Let's delve into this a bit. The enduring appeal of the Arthurian legends lies in their universality. These tales encapsulate timeless themes that speak to the human condition across generations and cultures. Heroism, love, betrayal, and the quest for a better world. These are the threads that weave together the rich tapestry of Arthur's story. 
Consider heroism, the cornerstone of the Arthurian narrative. Arthur, the once and future king, embodies the archetype of the hero. He rises from humble beginnings, faces insurmountable challenges, and ultimately sacrifices himself for the greater good. This narrative of the underdog rising to greatness resonates deeply with us, as we all yearn for the courage and strength to overcome our own personal trials. Then there's love, both romantic and platonic, in all its complex glory. From the passionate affair between Lancelot and Guinevere to the deep bonds of brotherhood among the Knights of the Round Table, these relationships expose the joys and pains of love, stirring our hearts with their timeless relevance. Betrayal, another universal theme, is a bitter pill to swallow, yet it's one we've all tasted. Arthur's own son, Mordred, betrays him, leading to the downfall of his kingdom. This harsh reminder of the destructive power of betrayal strikes a chord with us as we've all felt the sting of broken trust. Lastly, the quest for a better world is a common thread in the Arthurian narrative. The round table, a symbol of equality and unity, reflects Arthur's vision for a just society. This aspiration resonates with us as we too dream of building a better, fairer world. So, whether King Arthur was a man of flesh and blood or a symbol of our deepest aspirations, his legend lives on, inspiring us to dream of a world that could be. The Arthurian legends, steeped in history and fantasy, continue to weave their magic on us. These enduring tales, born from the mists of ancient Britain, have evolved and grown through the centuries. They've been shaped by historical events and figures like Geoffrey of Monmouth and Thomas Mallory, who infused the narrative with their unique perspectives and cultural contexts. These legends have survived the test of time, adapting to the changing tastes of societies and generations, yet always preserving their core elements. King Arthur, the once and future king, his loyal knights of the round table, the enchanting Merlin, the Holy Grail. These are more than just characters and objects. They are symbols that resonate with us on a deep, fundamental level. So the next time you hear about King Arthur and his knights, remember, you're not just listening to a story, you're part of a centuries-old tradition that continues to shape our culture and our imaginations.